David Hart and I am the founder of the G4 Guitar Method. What I want to do in this video is introduce you to what we call Senior Level 1 and this is assuming that you're a beginner. The G4 Guitar Method has really been developed with the beginner to intermediate player in mind. What we wanted to do was create a method that was based on what we, we think are the most important skills that you need to learn in order to ultimately be able to play the songs that you want to play. Most songs incorporate what we call these seven essential skills. So if you learn these seven skills and develop these skills using the G4 guitar method, what you're going to find is you're going to be able to play the songs that you want to play sooner. When we learn through a structured method rather than just randomly, what tends to happen is you, you, you focus on the things that matter rather than doing all these things that are probably really wasting a lot of time, a lot of precious time that you have. So if you're going to practice each day, you want to make the most of that practice and you want to know that you're practicing things that matter that are going to get you to be able to play the songs that you want to play. I want you to think of learning guitar very much like learning a language. That the, you, You're not just going to be able to have a conversation. It doesn't work like that. You need to learn certain skills, build the, the, the skills are the fundamentals, the building blocks that will allow you then to go on and play the songs that you want to play. So it doesn't matter. If you look at any song, it doesn't really matter what the song is. Most songs are going to have at least some rhythm. They're, they're probably, you know, when it comes to guitar, a large number of songs use chords. And, and so that involves a certain amount of strumming and sometimes it involves picking. So you need to develop those skills to be able to play the majority of popular songs. So let's jump in. I, what, what I'll do now is get you straight into the method and show you what it's all about. So what we have here, and I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. That's the cover page to Senior Level 1, and then I'm going to move straight to the contents. And so there are 39 pages in here altogether, and the, of that there are there are several hundred exercises that you you can work through now this is the practice log the idea of the practice log is just simply writing your practice each day and then tally it up in the right hand corner the right sort of the right hand column and that will allow you to be able to track how your practice is, is progressing and how much time that you're putting in. Because you want to know how much time you're putting in. It, research shows that by tracking practice, we get a better sense of what we should expect in return. So if you're practicing for 30 minutes a day, you after a month, you get a, a feeling of how much progress you're making. So you know if you continue to do that or you increase it or decrease it, you know the expectation, you know your progress will slow down. And there's usually this, what we call this delayed effect. So the practice you do this month is more likely to come to fruition next month. So don't expect immediate results. It's just the nature of, of a skill that takes time to learn like guitar. We live in this instant, instant gratification world, so we're used to things happening quickly. Uh, when it comes to a skill like guitar, it takes time. So the checklist is really just all the exercises in the method, and you just tick these off as you go, which helps you to see how you're progressing at any given time. So if you can see that you've got maybe you know two of the columns all ticked off, then you know that you've progressed about 20% of the way through the method. So that's the idea, just to give you a little bit of an idea of where you're at. Now, uh, there's a questionnaire that you can have a look at. Just have a read through those questions. Um, if you work with the teacher, the teacher likes to go through these with you just to see how you, where you're kind of positioned at this point and to, to understand your motivation as well for learning guitar. And you want to take a note of why you're learning guitar right now just so you can refer back to it at those times when you're unsure about why you even decided to learn guitar in the first place. Now, the practice schedule is... Pretty self-explanatory, just write in your start times and finish times. So in other words, what time on a Monday do you plan to practice? So this is your plan. So what time on a Tuesday do you plan to practice and, and when do you plan to finish? So if you're going to start at, say, 6 o'clock and finish at 6.30, just write that in there and then write 30 minutes. So that gives you an idea of your plan so you can try and work to that and build the habit because practice is all about habit. There's a few other things that you can note on there, such as deliberate practice. Uh, that just means intentional practice. And you really want to make sure you focus on making your practice quality and intentional. Better to practice 10 minutes a day focused, uninterrupted practice than to be doing, say, 30 minutes a day where you're constantly distracted or trying to watch TV or surf the internet at the same time. Quality matters when it comes to your practice. 
Okay, just one thing that you need to know here at this point is what BPM stands for, and it stands for beats per minute, and you'll see those on a metronome. So 120 beats per minute is what we call kind of a moderate speed, and 60 beats per minute is what we call a slow speed. So in this case, you're going to be doing most exercises starting slow, so 60 beats per minute or less in some cases. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, here are a few guitar basics. You can go through these uh, yourself. I'll just quickly outline what they are. Guitar parts just is what it says. It tells you what the different parts are called. Then we've got the finger numbers here. So you know on that hand that you're going to be uh, fretting the guitar with what the numbers are called. And if you're a piano player, just note that it's thumb one, two, three, four, not one, two, three, four, five, like on a piano. There's the musical alphabet. We only use uh, seven sort of letters, A, B, C, D, F, G, and you can see that in the music alphabet that we've also marked them as colors, and that just helps with the color coding that we use in the method. And then there's the string numbers, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, the thinnest string, just remember the thinnest string is number one, and the thickest string is number six. Okay, guitar basics number two, we've got the counting here, and if I just quickly do these, we've just got one, two, three, four, so that you're counting four and you're clapping on the one in on the guitar. That might be strumming or it might be picking, but you're just holding it. One, two, three, four. So if you were singing, that would be one. So it would go for the whole four beats. One, two, three, but it wouldn't bum 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 bum. It would just be held. In this case, we're going da da. And in the last case, we're going da 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 da. So you can see see the difference. Now a metronome, uh, metronomes, uh, uh, this is a traditional metronome. You can also find metronomes online. It's up to you what you choose to use. This talks about holding the guitar. There's a, just a few little things to take notice there. The guitar being centered, the guitar being on an angle, as you can see there. Minimal wrist bend. We don't want to, you know, when you come come to play guitar and you're play, playing, you don't want this wrist to be bent. Let me just bring that forward. Okay, so you don't want that to be too bent. You want to keep it fairly open when you're playing the guitar. Uh, you also want uh, your shoulders to be nice and even, relaxed arms, and a straight back. Now down here we've got guitar tab. A lot of music is written for guitar in guitar tab, and what this is are that these are the six strings of the guitar as we color coded earlier. If I just go back to there, you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six. Except with tab, it's sort of like turned around, and the thinnest string there is on the top, and the thicker string is on the bottom. Whereas in, when you're playing the guitar, you'll notice it's the other way around. So it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, but if you get stuck on that, just, just look it up on the internet, Guitar Tab, and you should find a video on YouTube that will explain it quite well. Then you're going to jump into the first exercises, which are picking. This talks about how to hold a pick. Just have a run through there. It's pretty straightforward. Just make sure that when you're holding the pick that you've got the thumb. I'll just grab this one here. So I've got my thumb there, and then I'm going to put the pick here almost like a flagpole, so you can see there. I put it there, and then I'm just going to hold it with this finger here, and that's that's the picking motion that I'm going to use there. So for strumming, we tend to strum more from the wrist or even sometimes from the elbow, and with picking, we tend to go from the wrist or even sometimes just the finger. And so it really depends on what feels comfortable for you, but make sure that you've got that a good grip on the pick, and also make sure the picks are hard. Uh, I'm not a fan of soft picks. I think that that they have their, their role in certain places when you need to play softly, but they're generally not great for control. Whereas a hard pick like this will give you the control. Now the picking direction means picking down, picking up. And that's what those little symbols are for. And there are five exercises. And what you're gonna do in this first exercise is simply pick on the sixth string. So this is tab, refer back to the tab if you're unsure. And the idea here is that you're just gonna pick down, up, down, up on the sixth string. In the case of exercise two, you're gonna pick down on the sixth string and up on the fifth string. And then on the third exercise, you're gonna pick up on the sixth string and down on the fifth string. And on the fourth exercise there, you're gonna pick down down on, on down on sixth, down on fifth, down on sixth, down on fifth. And then here you're gonna pick up on fifth, up on sixth, up on fifth, up on sixth. Okay, so we have videos for those in our members section. So if you do decide to become a, a student of G4, you'll get access to videos on all these as well. The other thing that you can practice, and this is all 
based on what you would do in your first lesson and what we would ask you to focus on in your first week. So you've got the picking exercises and then you can work on a chord. And so the first chord that we teach you is the E minor. But what this diagram here, you don't learn to play this chord, which is a C just yet, but this just demonstrates what a chord is, it outlines. So, and you can see there's some technique here, a flat thumb behind the neck, fingertips on the actual frets and the strings and you can see that you keep your fingers close to the frets these are the frets here all right so the fingertips stay up close to the fret. don't bring it back here make sure it's up there near the fret and then the top here is what the chord is called number one that's so this is this particular chord that we're looking at here is a c chord these these like zero or x means that you play the string if it's open so if there's no finger on there you still play that string but if there's an x it means you don't you don't play that string and then the fourth point here is the finger numbers. So one, two, three, and this is how it looks on the guitar, one, two, three. So what you can start off here is a very simple two finger chord, which is called E minor. And so you're gonna put your first finger there on to the second fret of the fifth string, and you're gonna put your second finger onto the second fret of the fourth string. So that would be like the here around this area. So both in that second fret on your guitar, but on the fifth and fourth strings, one and two respectively. Okay, there's a little bit of a revision section there which you can go over, which is really covers what's just been done in this first lesson. And it, yeah, if you have any other questions, then definitely have a chat to one of our teachers. Uh, you'll see on the, our website, the locations, go to our locations page and just Pick a teacher. If you're, if there's a teacher in your area, definitely pick them first because then you've got that ability to be able to go to them in person. But if you're, if you're not near any of our teachers, just pick any teacher you like, and you can do online lessons as well. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to contact us at any time. And good luck and enjoy uh, your guitar learning experience. Thank you.